we need to approach mental illness the way we approach cancer. When you have cancer, you get a definitive treatment for that cancer right off the bat. And for psychiatry, that might mean making sure that you get the psychotherapy and the medication and some vocational support right off the bat. The second phase of treatment is usually something that's a little bit more interventional in cancer. And in psychiatry, that would be like the electroconvulsive therapy. In cancer, though, there's a third line. And that third line is a clinical trial so that you can be exposed to new emerging research treatments because that's where people believe hope lies, in the identification and in the evaluation of new definitive treatments. And the majority, or at least a large percentage of the people who have cancer personally become involved as participants in the discovery of new and effective treatments for cancer. In mental health, that is not the status quo. Only a tiny, tiny fraction of people who have mental illness or addiction, no matter how little they have responded to traditional treatments, will actually get involved in research. Instead, what happens to those people is they end up being treated with cocktails of multiple medications for which there is no empirical evidence of efficacy. So we deal with the desperation about needing to do something for treatment of mental illness. We leave that to the interaction of the individual doctor and the individual patient to come up with the best solution to that, as opposed to the way they do it in cancer, which is to recognize that this gap in the efficacy of treatment constitutes a fundamental threat to public health and quality of life, and that it's a societal imperative to address this gap in efficacy, and which ultimately is a gap in knowledge.